Ladies and gentlemen, this is Valley Ray. It's roasting day. It is roast day today, you guys. You haven't had a roast from us in quite a bit, so <laughs> we are back in the box today and we're going to be rating, reviewing, or roasting some amazing, possibly cringeworthy, commercially manufactured costumes. As you're well aware from the last costume reveal, a lot of these costumes are deeply questionable. So we are back with a fresh batch of costumes to roast. We're gonna be going through each of them with you, sharing our thoughts and wildly subjective opinions on each of them, what parts they hit, what parts they missed, and whether or not they accurately match the ballet that they were intended for. So if you're ready with your toaster or your lighter or your blowtorch or your flamethrower or, or even a sparkler if you're feeling glitzy and you're ready to roast with us then hit the like button and we will roll directly into the video this is our disclaimer our official disclaimer this video is just purely for fun it's not meant to be like super serious and it is hugely subjective we are aware that these costumes and the name that they were given aren't supposed to be misleading and a lot of the times when students receive the costume they don't even see the name so yeah just take this video with a grain of salt as you should with anything else on the internet i suppose we hope you will be able to enjoy this video be able to laugh with us and have a little bit of fun we're excited. Always up for a good roast. Grab your blow torches let's and go. let's go to the first one. Let's dive in. Okay. So this is a costume called Nesim Dorma. Nesim Dorma with an M is yeah. not correct. <laughs> it's supposed to be Nesin, Nesin with an Dorma. N. So that's just kind of comical. <laughs> Nesim Dorma, if you don't know, is a very, very, very famous piece from a famous opera, Tarando. And Nesim Dorma is like the most famous. Like the iconic scene. Yeah. Nesim Dorma, I mean, nobody sleeps. The scene where that piece is performed is like in a nighttime, like kind of at midnight scene. So they tried to put the black in there, but they also like did a half half yeah. situation with like black and white, which I think is much more contemporary. It is looking. very, very contemporary looking. If you were doing like an Alice in Wonderland ballet, right? Okay, maybe minus the flowers. Yeah, for sure. The black and white, and then the because the white, cards, the cards. It yeah, kind of it has that effect. I think it could work for some ballets, but I don't know. This piece, Nessa it Dorma. seems much more. It's not modern, contemporary. Yeah. That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, it, it seems like a very like non-contemporary piece. From tutu construction, though, I appreciate that the bodice goes into a point at the front. Yes, but the only thing I would change is like, I, I don't mind the black and white idea, but the straps, especially in the triangle shape, I don't know, it just looks like cat ears to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> cat it just, ears. I, I, I can't shake the cat ears. Just... <laughs> all in all though, I think it's a solid costume idea. It, maybe not as a Dorma specifically, but as a costume itself, it holds its own. I would rate it a meow out of 10. Meow. <laughs> 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 Moving right along, we have Kateria's variation. And this, uh, they went for the Kitri dress vibe. Kiteria is um, yeah. Kitri's other name. In the novel, her name is Kiteria, but in the ballet, somehow we just decided to dumb it down to Kitri. Kitri's variation, and since she has a fan, we can assume it's either the entrance or the act three wedding variation, yes. not the act one variation because that's a castanet. The entrance is more plausible though, because yeah. act three, she's in a platter tutu. Three, always, Every always, single time. Every time. Yeah, she is in a platter tutu. Um, now in terms of Kitri's entrance, we're assuming it's Kitri's entrance. Honestly, this isn't bad. If I were to look at it, I would see Kitri. I would understand. I think my one gripe is the skirt. Uh, Kitri usually had the tiered skirt, so it's like ruffles in like layers, usually three. Not the romantic 225. It's like an actual dress. Mm -hmm. It looks like a dress. But yeah, other than that, they pretty, good. pretty much nailed it. Like the colors. Yeah. And even the V at the front. The yeah. fan. The fan looks great. The flower in her hair. The flower. She has hair. a flower. So yeah, it's pretty much key tree. Even yeah. like the lace at the bottom. Honestly, this isn't bad. It's not bad at all. Yeah. It's pretty good out of 10. A little bit too romantic out of 10, but <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Swedish Rhapsody. I love this piece. Oh, yeah. It's not a ballet. It's just a piece of music and it's an absolute joy. But it's very lively. It's yeah. very very bouncy, very energetic, and it's it's fun. It is fun. I mean, it doesn't look like traditional Swedish clothes. Well, <laughs> if that's what y'all are looking for. <laughs> I like the skirt a lot. 
I do too. I think it's cute. The only thing I would have changed is the halter neck. We talked about this in the <laughs> other costume video. Halter necks in ballet are not the most flattering. Mm -hmm. Like in ballet, we always want to have like the width of the shoulders be emphasized rather than trying to narrow it down. That's the only thing, but subjective. Yeah. It's, it's, it's honestly fine. I do like the skirt. I think if we had just put a classical bodice on it, it would work for Don Q dream scene. Yes. Or um, the river variations from I Pharaoh's love Daughter. The, I love the river variation. And even that like bit from Napoli where yeah, they're the underwater. underwater. It has that really watery. It does look pretty. Appearance. I mean, I really don't really have anything to say in terms of like linking the costume to the piece of music. Yeah, like, exactly. There's nothing that says this is Swedish Rhapsody. The skirt's pretty out of 10. The skirt is pretty out of 10. <laughs> okay. Pink Panther theme. Ooh. This is like Razzmatazz. Razzmatazz. <laughs> If you're talking about your crayons. <laughs> yeah, it's pink. And also the Pink Panther theme. It's sort of like jazz. Yeah. So I feel like... I think the ruffly skirt kind of worked. It does kind of work. It has that sort of like swing vibe. Yeah, it's not meant to be classical. So the more current style for this yeah. tutu actually works with Pink Panther. Subjectively, if you're asked my opinion, I might not put her in ruffles per se. Something much not sleek. fluffy. Yeah, much more sleek. But maybe just because we're thinking about the Pink Panther yeah. himself. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Pink Panther. Pink Panther is so funny. I'm kind of Pink Panther -y today. A classical tutu would not work. That for would pink not work. Panther. Yeah, so con considering that, the ruffles aren't bad in comparison. Yeah, I think it's cute. Bar. Give it a pink out of 10. It's a razzmatazz out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rolling right along. Paquita. Paquita. In is... reality, for Paquita first act, it's not bad at yeah, all. Yeah, for sure. I can see what they were trying to do with uh -huh. like the, the white petticoat with the imitation know, corset. It's... And like the drapes at the mm -hmm. front and the side. Yeah, forgive our terminology. <laughs> Horrible terminology. <laughs> Again with the choker, you guys. Um, I'm not liking the duct tape look. <laughs> I, I I want to know why. There is a thing like historically, dancers used to wear lots of necklaces. Yeah, and, to dance. and chokers even. And chokers and stuff. But historically, it was thin. It was literally a ribbon. Like like if you look at conservatoire. Oh yeah yeah yeah. They it's have weird. the ribbon, but it's not like duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> with the duct tape aside, the costume itself. It's could work for Paquita. I feel like normally Paquita is associated with like oranges and reds. That's and, like, true. Like much more browns. earth tones. Not so much blue. Blue would be more in the last act of Paquita. Like yeah. The wedding scene. Yeah, like the wedding scene. But then you wouldn't be wearing like a peasant dress. It's almost there. Yeah. It's almost there. Yeah, they got two elements separately. <laughs> but ultimately, it's not bad. Yeah. It's really not bad. Pretty good job out of 10. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Ooh. Go tell it on the mountain. <laughs> That's the strangest song to make a costume out of. Like like the one that little kids sing at church during Christmas time. During Christmas time. Like that, times. go tell it on the mountain. The costume isn't bad, but like it doesn't, how does it match? I fail to understand. I'm getting like Sugar Plum, Sleeping right. Beauty vibes. Yeah. So maybe they were thinking, okay, Sugar Plum, but Sugar Plum means Christmas and Christmas means go tell it on the mountain. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, Thrice removed. <laughs> Subjective. Subjective. Honestly, though, looking at from a costume perspective, name aside, yeah. we're forgetting the name. Forget, Forget the, the name. name. But the costume itself is actually very pretty. It is. I like the shade of pink that they used, especially for the skirt. Yeah. In conjunction with the silver. Because pink and silver, you'll see that a lot. It's really not bad. They have the sweetheart yeah. line that, going on. That's a win. That mm -hmm. is a win. The boss comes to a point. All the pieces are there. Yeah. I think it's like one of the best that we've seen on, on the channel. <laughs> and I like the like, not brocade, but it gives that impression. That impression. When they yeah. have a small enough pattern. Yeah. It's not bad, but like, go tell it on the mountain. I would say I like both the costume and the name separately. Yeah. <laughs> Out of 10. <laughs> oh, wow. Giselle Valls. Dum, 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 da, 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 dum, 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 No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> this is giving more Paquita the wedding act. Yeah, or maybe even Raymonda. It could do Raymonda as well. Um, Gamzadi? Yeah, Gamzadi would do this better. It could, it could do Gamzadi. It's not Giselle though, I'm sorry. Especially not the vals. Maybe Batilda? Maybe? But then you would have to make the skirt much longer. Yeah, but Batilda wears a full dress. A full dress. Subjectively, no. Maybe even objectively, no. <laughs> like if you look up Giselle, there, you will not see a costume like this. Every single character in Giselle, excepting Batilda and like all their attendants, all the other characters in Giselle, 
don't wear a single sparkle. No sequins, yeah. no diamonds, it's no crystals. It's very peasant cottage core yeah. vibes. Not yeah. royalty core. Yeah, exactly. At all. This is much more royalty core. Like she had a crown and everything. Yeah. If this were in Paquita, the costume is quite nice. Yeah, I like, like the crystals going from the shoulder and all the way down the neck. Line. Again, it kind of expands the shoulder yeah. line, which is very, very nice. Definitely not Giselle, but it is a good costume yeah. nonetheless. The pieces are there. Yeah. The pieces are all there. It's a uh, almost there out of 10. We are motoring. We are. Ooh. This is such a cute costume. It's but pretty. Is it Romeo and Juliet? So I think not, and just subjectively for, yeah. for you reasons. I've never seen a Juliet that wears a bell tutu. I even feel like for the era, like this is giving me very historical accuracy. People are gonna come for me, but I feel like the off the shoulder and the wide neckline is more of a Victorian thing. Agreed. Same with the wide skirts. It's a very Victorian thing, and I don't think Romeo and Juliet was then. Just from an era's perspective. I feel like it looks out of place. I agree. It's not Romeo and Juliet. I mean, it's a really lovely costume. This is one yeah. of my favorites. Like, yeah, everything great. is there. Even the colors, these little details, yeah. the invisible straps, all for that. It's a win! But it's not Romeo and Juliet. I'm sorry. It's a lovely out of 10, but it's not Romeo and Juliet. Okie dokie. The Four Seasons. I'm only seeing one season here, and it's spring. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay, so the colors are very springy. Hear me out now. I'm going somewhere with this. Are you really? Yes, yeah, so the spring <laughs> We're really doing this. Colors, yes, I'm reaching. The spring colors are spring, and the brown flowers and bronze are autumn. So we have spring and autumn. autumn and, and spring is a cross between winter and summer, and autumn is a cross between summer and winter. So technically, it's all four seasons. <laughs> It works! <laughs> it's a very, very deep kind of skewed analysis. It is the four seasons. Thank you. I'll be taking no more. I will be taking no disputes on this subject. Okay, looking at the costume, aside from the name. The, whatever this is, it kind of looks like... Yeah. It's interesting. I feel like if you were to do that, you would want the lacing. For sure. For sure. Just so that it, you know, brings everything together on the bodice and yeah. then the skirt is like more separate. I think this would work for Dunhue dream scene. Yeah. It might also work for Sleeping Beauty fairy attendance. Mm -hmm. Maybe Cinderella. That. Like the spring fairy. Spring fairy or autumn fairy. Even. <laughs> <laughs> or any of the There's fairies. There's no really. autumn here, okay. <laughs> But all in all, this one is, it's not its not a bad costume. Yeah. It's not that bad. I would rate it a just spring <laughs> out of 10. All right, next. Woo! Reverie. Reverie. I'm assuming they're meaning the piece by Debussy. I love I, Reverie. I love the piece Reverie. This costume is not Reverie though, for me. It's a lot more, uh... it looks you like, know? It looks spiky, it looks modern, it looks well, too if it were, strong. If it were red, it would look fire. I mean, Oops. if the sequins were like orange and red and yeah. gold. The tutu yeah. doesn't need to be expansive for the firebird. Yeah. Because she's a smallish bird. Which doesn't strike me as <sighs> very, not reverie yeah. or a dream at all. Also, WC is an impressionist composer. That sort of like movement in that era. So the impressionist paintings were usually very muted, very painterly yeah. sort of artwork. And they used a lot of blur pastel. You know what it looks like? It looks like a beetle. That's why I don't like it. <laughs> it Maybe looks... a little. Honestly, it's a well-constructed tutu. Invisible straps. Mm -hmm. It has the V in the front. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. it's very small. It, it's very small, but, but it has structure. Exactly. Like if it's a Balanchine yeah. piece, it this... could work, but exactly. not in this color because this is beetle. Beetle core. <laughs> All right, moving along. We're motoring, you guys. We're, we're going, going really quick. We're going fast. Ooh, Guyane. No. If you haven't seen Guyane, it's Guyane. a it's a very intense story. Yeah, and they, we have some very powerful characters. Powerful music, powerful yeah. dancing. You probably heard of the saber dance. <laughs> It's, it's just intense, that's yeah. all it is. And this costume is very ethereal, which is kind of like the exact flip opposite yeah. of the ballet itself. So putting Guyane to it, it I, don't think it, I don't think it works. <laughs> Furthermore, Guyane is set in Armenian culture. I mean, this, 
I'm sorry. Even the main female ballet protagonist does not wear any tutu of any sort. No. She wears a long dress. Honestly, from a costume perspective, not my favorite. It's not my favorite either. I mean, I just feel like there's a lot of different textures that are all smashed together, but like yeah. not blended, not tasteful. There's nothing done. that ties them in together. So it's just like pink sleeves and you have an ombre skirt. Yeah. And then you have the gold textured bodice. Yeah. And then you have the texture on the top. I feel like it's just one too many things. And also how yeah. they make it cut off at the wrist. It's not the most flattering thing because it just shortens the line of the arm. Now there are some ballets where they do have the sleeves, but they'll make it come to, like figure skaters, they'll have it come to a point. Yeah. And it's like kind of loops, loops around, around your middle finger. finger. Yeah. So it elongates the line, but you still have the long sleeve look. That aside, and the Guyane aside, oh, it would work for it, marzipan. Oh yeah, okay, okay, it could work for marzipan. As that's the closest I think I can find. Yeah, like the lattice pattern on the front might yeah. work better for marzipan. Not the best. Not the ten. best out of 10. Okay, the Blue Danube, or the Blue Danube. I can see where they were trying to go yeah, with it. Yeah, I can totally see it. The waltzy vibe, because the Blue Danube is a waltz mm -hmm. by Johann Strauss. One I mean, of his most iconic, most notable, most famous, I mean, yeah. almost overplayed works, but it's just not overplayed because it's so fabulous. It's it, The costume is blue. Yeah. And I like that they tried to go for like the romantic skirt because it's kind of more yeah. like a waltzy yeah. ballroom vibe. Yeah, so it's a very round, expansive skirt. I just feel like it kind of looks, I would have liked it if it was less peasant core and more royalty. So like my only complaint is maybe they had invisible straps and maybe a bit more substantial of an overskirt. I think so too. I think just the rose pattern, while it's pretty for the yeah. whole skirt, I think maybe that's what's making it look more peasantry to me. Yeah, maybe. But like we're splitting hairs at this point. Yeah, ultimately, honestly. Ultimately, it's beautiful. Yeah, and I can see blue to new. It, it matches, it fits. Yeah, I'd score this. Um, it works out of 10. Ooh, okay. Clara's dream. I see they were trying to go uh, green it, on us. <laughs> it's very green. In my opinion, I think this works better for the party scene. Like this looks more like a Christmas party dress. It does. Rather than the dream when she goes to the land of sweets in her nightgown. This is right. not the nightgown look. It could work for a party dress. She Normally she doesn't wear green, but if you're trying to go Christmas core, it subjectively works. In terms of the silhouette, the puff sleeves with the little ribbon, those details. Mm -hmm. the, the sash. The sash is very Clara. And even like the length of the skirt, it's for it's a little girl. For a little girl, especially because this is a very young girl. It works. It works great. I agree. And then also the velvet hair bow. Oh yeah. The That's very, very accurate. It's very Clara. Yeah. My for one gripe. Of course, I have a gripe. Of course. <laughs> Let me guess, sequins. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's the thing, though. If you were to wear sequins to a Christmas party now... Yeah. Yes! More sequins! We need more sequins! <laughs> but back then... Back then, for like a, a classical production of The Nutcracker, mm -hmm. subjectively, sequins might not be the choice. Yeah. However, I would say right on out of 10. Wow. Okay, so Spiegel and Spiegel, in case you don't know, this is, again is a very famous piece of music. Mm -hmm. Christopher Whelan actually used Spiegel and Spiegel for his Padida from After the Rain. Yeah. Iconic Padida. So famous. Beautiful. Long. Yeah, it's long. long. So this piece is so popular and we've seen it a lot in mm -hmm. like ballet competitions, particularly contemporary numbers and like group pieces and whatnot. It's so beautiful and everybody uses it. And I think the crowning characteristic of Spiegel and Spiegel is how very minimalist, how pared down it is. It makes you think of just whiteness. Like, yeah, so it's, it's very peaceful. It's peaceful, it's serene, it's but in a very, very clean, pared down minimalist way. It's simple, but it's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. It's slow. It never feels like it's rushing to get yeah. anywhere. It's yeah. not feeling like pressured to move on. It's just yeah. going at its own easy, gentle, beautiful pace. Yeah. And it's lovely. I really like it. It's perfect for falling asleep too. Mm -hmm. And so to look at the costume, it actually works amazingly. It's basically just a leotard and a skirt. Yeah, which is like a more modern look, but mm -hmm. Spiegel and Spiegel is a more mm -hmm. modern piece yeah so together they work really well so yeah. i would give this a fantastic out of yeah time. costumes this round are actually really really good we're feeling what good. is this oh <laughs> i take it back this is supposedly capelia <laughs> this looks very spartacus to me it looks extremely spartacus it looks so spartacus the color even like yeah. the sort of cut of the cost, yeah, like a she, silhouette. She always wears just like the very simple 
yeah. short, short dress. And usually it has some kind of drape element. Sometimes yeah. it drapes off one shoulder. Yeah. But this one is draped across the front. It's so it's Spart so Spartacus. But like, imagine picturing this like dun 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 dun. I'm perplexed. I'm sorry. Did they like? Seriously, Spartacus. mess this up. It's Spartacus. It's Spartacus, you guys. <laughs> like, if you put the word Spartacus on it, I'd be like, this is phenomenal. Yeah, I know, right? Put me in it. Yeah. Find me a partner. Let's go. <laughs> but, Capelia, did we have to do that? I'd rate this a fumble out of 10. This was a fumble <gasps> and a half out of 10. This is a good contemporary. It is a good contemporary. Like, if you have a very contemporary piece and you want a nice neutral costume. But don't that, call it Capelia. Capelia. <laughs> Especially Capelia the doll. Oh my god. Like, the yeah. doll is the epitome of, like, frills and fluff and yeah. beauty and... I feel like the person naming these was just having a field day. Like, oh yeah, this is Cap Capelia. That's kind of funny. That's actually. really funny. Alrighty, moving along. Sleeping Beauty. It's not bad. That's really not bad. A fairy attendant. I yeah. wouldn't put this on Aurora herself because she needs, she needs, needs a plot or two too. I would put this on the fairy attendants. Like the garland waltz, maybe. I think this would be better for Waltz of the Flowers though, personally. Waltz of the Flowers would be gorgeous. Given that it actually has flowers on it. <laughs> That's why it works for garland waltz. Yeah. Like if you were like one of the attendants with like the little baskets mm. of flowers. Yeah, wouldn't that be lovely? So in terms of Sleeping Beauty, yeah. Yeah, it matches the ballet, I guess. Nothing to say, you know, it works. I like that they have invisible elastics. Invisible elastics that. are great. It is uh, pretty nice out of 10. All right, moving right along. Okay. <laughs> Those are two words that I never thought I'd oh, hear in the same <laughs> sentence. <laughs> the all black, they're trying to give us more ninja core, but then they call it kung fu, which is like not the same thing. Kung fu, you don't have to wear black. Even so, like the ninjas don't normally wear black. Yeah. It's just a stereotypical. It's just stereotypical. Pianos are black. So it could have been the partially. Piano. It could have been the piano. I would rate this a question mark out of ten. What the fuck? Last one. Wow, we are rocketing. Moonlight Sonata. This is a pretty costume though. It reminds me of a pink, fluffier, fuller version of the Serenade costumes. Yeah. Because it's like has the straight across yeah. the front and then the romantic, really long romantic skirt. skirt. Um, it reminds me very much of Serenade, just like a little bit more elaborate. Yeah. Because Serenade is very pared down. But this is really, really nice. I know, I like it. I feel like this could be really good for Art. Waltz of the Flowers. And maybe even like Cinderella. Yeah, I think that'd be really pretty. Or like Fairy Godmother. Right? The velvet with a good choice. Yeah. The colors work. It's like a mauve Crayola colored pencil. I like it. I think it's pretty. Now, is it Moonlight Sonata? The very <sighs> famous Beethoven Moonlight Sonata. No, Moonlight Sonata needs to be a dark blue or black. I think so know? too, because especially because it goes into that very intense part in yeah. the music. Yeah, this would work for Waltz of the Flowers. Waltz of the Flowers for sure. It Maybe. is a very pretty costume. Not Moonlight Sonata, but it's pretty. But it is pretty. <laughs> That was part two of rating these commercially manufactured ballet costumes. The ones that were good were good. Yes, the ones that were good were much better. Although we did have some very questionable ones <laughs> in there. Hopefully you laughed along with us. Yes. Obviously these aren't bad costumes. They work really well for people who need costumes for our show. And, and children will only wear this once for their year-end recital and then like they'll grow out of it and yeah. never wear it again. So yeah. like it's good that they have companies that are trying to produce decent yeah. costumes for like an affordable yeah. price point. And I also, I know for smaller studios, costumes can get insanely expensive. They can. To rent a tutu for YGP. Like a proper one. It's handmade, hand sewn. Every single sequin is done by hand. It costs like, a hundred dollars an hour to rent this tutu. It's expensive. So it's a bit of an interesting, strange industry because it's very, very hard to get your hands on a quality costume. I think we've come a long way. There's definitely room to grow. We're hoping for the future that there will be 
a more sustainable way to produce costumes that are good quality and also that are easily accessible so that our young students will have that experience because not everyone will be able to wear a professional tutu, you know? If you don't become a professional ballerina, some people have no chance of ever having that experience. So we think it would be really good for, you know, younger students to be able to have that experience and to have that opportunity yeah. to wear a quality costume. I think we're very, very hopeful that we will see it very, very soon and that yeah. we'll have beautiful, high quality costumes for everyone. If you have any other costumes that you've spotted that made you raise an eyebrow a little bit, feel free to send it our way and maybe we'll include it for the next costume roasting session. Yeah. If you like this video and you like seeing us roast stuff, then <laughs> lucky you, we have a whole playlist of us roasting stuff linked above and below. If your blow torch hasn't run out of butane yet <laughs> and you still could use a couple more roasting sessions, then head on over there and check them out. If you like the video, then like the video. And if you'd like to see more videos like this pop up in your subscription box, then make sure you subscribe to the channel because we'd love to have you with us and we're gonna have a lot of fun in the near future. Anyway, I think that is all from us for now. This is Valley Rain signing off. Until the next video. Bye. Rev your blow torches, everybody. No, that's a, that's a chainsaw. Wait, that's a chainsaw. Sorry, <laughs> I was like, that's that, not that's it. Not, <laughs> that's not it. Color my world crayon. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> that just unlocked memories that I forgot I had. Do any of y'all remember this? Two yeah. thousands kids, where are you at? Rise up. Let us know in the comments. Does this resonate with you? <laughs> Okay, yeah, so Rasmataz <laughs> works, I think. <laughs> Stop. <laughs>